his Florida trip. But I don't see him. So, Okay, well, we can have a uh, sharing discussion on, I think we, we, we should get back to this matter of uh, the mind and the mind of Christ and make sure it is clear that we were looking at this morning. Uh, also had some help to share, but... Uh, Okay. Now, mind and brain, as we should know, are not to be confounded. Brain is a fleshly organ, which is sinful and fallen. And the, vi the very biochemistry of thinking with the neurotransmitters and the structure and function of the brain, the very biochemistry that goes into the thinking process that produces the that is the infrastructure for thinking all of that is sinful and fallen you heard what I said uh, this is important to get clear because uh, or, or we are still uh, vague in many of these areas so whether it is noradrenaline or dopamine or serotonin and all the transmitters and synapses <clears throat> Because if, if the brain is dead, you can't think. And though thinking is a function of the brain, it is yet distinct from the brain. Am I making sense so far? Very important, you know, to understand these things. So the same thinking apparatus that we have, Jesus had. Are we clear on that? Same sinful fallen brain, flesh. And this, uh, this is, uh, brings us to an important point. Adam's brain as an organ was sinless in its anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. Not fallen. And was innocent in that it had never, uh, he, he had never, uh, up to the point when his test came, produced a sinful thought. And Satan managed to get his idea of exaltation of self and dismissal of God's principle of self-sacrificing love, Satan managed to get his idea, his thinking, into Adam's thinking to control Adam's mindset and set, it, set his thinking against God. So that in a sinless, unfallen brain, innocent up to that point, Satan exulted, showed off that he introduced a way of thinking that was opposed to God. And the victory for God is this, that now in sinful, fallen brain, with a sin-damaged biochemistry for thinking, as A.T. Jones says, what is God, what is a God worth if he can't take a challenge and win? So if Satan showed off that he could take sinless, unfallen brain with a sinless, unfallen thinking infrastructure and get sinful thoughts introducing it to mash up everything, 
God's fig tree now was taking sinful fallen brain with a sin damaged thinking infrastructure and through it to produce sinless thinking ideas feelings as expressed with the expressing the thinking of God that's the victory that Jesus has won uh, reversing victoriously what Satan had done in the Garden of Eden, what God did with uh, Jesus Christ taking on our sinful fall of flesh. Now, so let me pause here. Is that clear? Anybody has any difficulty with that up to this point? If you have a difficulty, say and say your reasons. Important to trash out these things. People sit down, don't say anything, then you hear uh, a strange wind blowing, and it makes you shiver. So, any winds blowing, let's hear them now and get them warmed. Am I clear so far? Yes. And these are things we worked out and trashed out years ago coming along. And we have to do it again for our younger generation and our newer people. All right. Now, when we talk about mind, that word can be used interchangeably with the word soul. And there are three functional components of the mind or soul. There is the willpower. There is the intellect. And there is the emotion or emotional or emotions. Uh, in, in language use and in Bible use, emotions usually are called the heart. I love you with all my heart. Referring to the emotions, not the organ that's beating in your chest. Okay, so will, intellect, emotions, making up the mind or soul. Now, the term spirit refers to the governing area of the thinking, the source of the thinking, and also, the functional area for storing character and also the capacity for knowing God and receiving God through his Holy Spirit. All those angles are involved in this difficult appreciation of the human spirit or the creature spirit of the intelligent creature. So Paul talks about the spirit of the mind. Okay. Now, in the work of maintaining, the work of uh, being victorious over sin and over all temptations and so on, uh, we looked at that this morning. Jesus was tempted Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, which meant that the, the tempting thought reached his thinking and he overcame in absolute surrender to his father by the word of God by expelling that alien thought and never letting it settle to be conceived to produce sinful thoughts, words, or deeds. So he was really tempted, as we explained this morning. Okay. And he overcame. And then we touched on the area that he was also tempted beyond us, in that he was tempted as a man to use his divinity to work miracles for himself or others, or even to save him from going to the cross. Now, this is the important area. Sorry, everybody's in here, but this is an area that uh, strange winds are blowing in. Let me just stress it this way. Uh, in the incarnation, which is a mystery, uh, remember the man Christ Jesus possessed two natures, the divine and the sinful fallen human. But he was one person in that the divine personality and 
all we can do is use the words that express an inspiration because these things are not easy to fathom. The divine personality fused with and condescended to function only through the, the human. So he was one person with two natures. So his divinity could not function on its own without he as a man choosing to do anything with it. And he chose to let it, he chose not to use it. He had to choose not to use it in his incarnation or to use it. He, he had to choose not to use it. He had that freedom. And let the Father use it to fill him with the fullness of the Holy Spirit so that no, the fullness of the Holy Spirit could control, could control the human thinking infrastructure to produce only the thinking of God, only sinless thinking. And I'm using thinking instead of mind because although we, we say we know what mind means, we keep slipping in our unconscious mind from mind to brain. And mind means thinking, thoughts, ideas, feelings. Okay. Now, now, this is a very delicate area. You can choose to make a comment or ask a question anytime. Very delicate area. And it's this. The compact between father and son through the eternal spirit of love had been made from all eternity past. In other, in other words, these are mysteries. There was never a time when the plan to save man was not in God's thinking. Hear what I said? There was never a time when the plan to save man was not in God's thinking. And we are into deep and mysterious areas, but the Father, the Son, and their Holy Spirit, the Father and Son by the Holy Spirit of self-sacrifice and love, concretize that covenant from all eternity past. And as Brother Glenn Wright uh, mentioned to me when we were using words this morning, I said uh, infinite wisdom was used in the plan of redemption to the mass. Uh, you can't use that term to the mass because infinite wisdom is limitless. So thanks for that correction. Uh, eternity past, eternity past, eternity past is beginning less. Whoa. No. Everybody following me? Father and son by their spirit having decided on the plan of salvation, listen to me carefully, could the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit functioning as God change uh, that plan? Don't worry to stare at me. I want a clear, straight answer. No. Looking about what dodging about. No. Having decided from all eternity past, that this was the best way to function, to save mankind, to secure the universe. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as God would not, could not have changed. I am Jehovah, I change not. Okay. Listen to, listen to how we're moving. Therefore, the divine nature of the Son of God, if it, when it was here on earth in him, if it were capable of its own personality function, would never have chosen to go against the will of the Father. But it was fused with and could function only through and be in submission to the human personality. The man Christ Jesus could have chosen to use his divine nature to do something against the will of God, and that would have been sin. Are you with me? Now, this is a serious matter. We are not saying that the divine nature could have done something because that divine nature, if it were to function, if it, if it had its function as if as, as the Son of God was before he came here, would never go against the will of the Father. 
because the will of Father and Son through the Holy Spirit from all eternity past was fixed in the plan of redemption. But the man Christ Jesus could have chosen to use his divine nature to come down from the cross, in which case he would be using his divine nature against the will of that said divine nature, Father and Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Yes. These are deep things we have to get into. And had he done that, and I hope a certain brother may be following from a certain country, uh, a certain, no, I'm going to say a certain, but not a Barbadian, a, a, a person was following in a country or a Sabbath school discussion, and he to, to, told me about it. And if Jesus had failed at all, there's another mystery. Not only would his humanity have been lost, and all of us, but this is the mystery. His divine nature couldn't just shake off everything and go back to the Father because the incarnation was irreversible. God gave him to us forever. So had he failed, there would be this mysterious, incomprehensible rupture in the persons of God. The divine nature couldn't die as a nature, but its personality, which had now become human, would cease. And therefore, we understand what A.T. Jones says when he says, God risked the universe, risked his throne, risked his Godhood, risked his Godhead to save wretches like us who so little appreciate the infinite love. You begin to see the area that we're getting into and the kind of love we are talking about with this God. We don't risk nothing. We scarcely risk anything for anybody. And look at, look at what God from all eternity, there was never a time, Sister White says, when the redemption of the human race was not in his mind, in his thinking. I pause there. Comments, questions, opposition, whatever you think, feel free. Go ahead. Brother Bruce. I, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm glad you touched here because, honestly, we cannot even begin to contemplate what it would have been like for Christ to come down. For, yeah, speak, speak clearly for Christ to come down from that cross oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and make that other decision. Mm -hmm. We cannot even wrap our minds around it, the rupture it would have caused. You know, when we look at the chapter, the efficacy of the cross, that, that reading, the cross was not only for humanity, but was also the antidote for the angelic unfallen worlds. We can't even wrap our minds around that what would have occurred. You, would, you have to rewrite the word of God. In, when it says in Nahum 1, 9, affliction would not arise the second time, that will have to be taken out because there will be no antidote against that text. We can't Thank you. Even whack me my own. Thank you. Any other comments, questions in this area before we move a little bit further on? What I've said so far is clear. Yeah. Brother Peter White, then Brother Austin Graves, then Peter Peter Broom. Yeah, earlier he was talking about um, he received the Holy Spirit with in the fullness. I was. I also preach to myself that the Spirit of God have no fullness. We call infinity don't have no fullness. So when you say that you're giving the Spirit in fullness, infinity do not have no fullness. Infinity is, is endless. Okay. Brother, Brother Austin, thank you. No, I just want to... Um, where we started, that text in uh, Ephesians 4 that you alluded to, 23 and 24, I read it from a New Living Translation. And because uh, it really impacts my mind on the air that we're in as well. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. I thought that was very interesting as it relates to the emotions. Both your thoughts and attitudes. And then it says in verse 24, put on your new nature 
created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. That is the nature of God, a righteous nature, a holy nature. And um, when we talk of the compact that was made from all eternity, probably we don't get the, 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 the kind of drift that that implies in actual fact. Here the Father and the Son, with the Holy Spirit, have made a compact that, you know what, we are going to save these people. And when the Son of God took on humanity, that also was in his thinking. Even though, well, he did not use his divinity, he understood what he was um, up against. Because, I mean, he knew what he came down to. Satan knew what he came to. And therefore, while the Son of God was learning obedience by the things he did, he clearly had also a vision as a human being. Because remember, Christ was taught by the Holy Spirit. And he knew the scriptures about 12 years old. It meant that all along as a youngster, he was being unfolded to him until when he went into the court at Jerusalem and saw the priest functioning, it really dawned on him, we are told by God's servant, that this is what he has come to fulfill. And to my mind, because remaining surrendered and submission to his father, and the father filling his divinity with the father's divinity, to use that expression, it meant that the son of God was committed to the ultimate to carry through this particular plan without a deviation at all from what was planned in heaven, even though he is not using his own divinity now. But confirm it because of the spirit in him and the word of God, I can see that really that was settled, even though Satan brought in his hottest temptations continually along the way. Yes, thank you. And that is why when Peter, thank you very much, that's why when Peter, Peter, came and told him, Lord, be it far from you to go to the cross. We have Jesus saying, get thee behind me, Satan. And we have a whole description on it in the Desire of Ages. So for it to have been righteousness, and Jesus rebuking Peter by saying, get thee behind me, Satan, would be, well, I, that would blow my mind. Okay, thank you, Brother Broom. Sister Sean, you are following? I want to quote from um, the 1895 General Conference Bulletin. Yes. As we discuss this matter. Okay. He says, our minds have consented to sin. We have felt the enticements of the flesh, and our minds yielded, our minds consented, and did the wills of the flesh and the desires of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. The flesh leads and our minds have followed, and with the flesh the law of sin is served. So our mind, pause a minute, our minds fulfill the desires of the flesh and of our minds? Yes. Okay, continue. When the mind can lead, the law of God is served. But as our minds have surrendered, yielded to sin, they have themselves become sinful and weak and are led away by the power of sin in the flesh. Now the flesh of Jesus Christ was our flesh and in it was all that is in our flesh. All the tendencies to sin that are in our flesh were in his flesh, drawing upon him to get him to consent to sin. Suppose he had consented to sin with his mind. What then? then his mind would have been corrupted and then he would have become like passions with us. But in that case, he himself would have been a sinner. He would have been entirely enslaved and we all would have been lost. Everything would have perished. So she know, he now quotes from um, Desire of Ages. It is true that Christ at one time said of himself, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. John 14, 30. Satan finds in human hearts 
some point where he can gain a foothold, some sinful desire is cherished, by means of which his temptations asserts their power. Where does he start the temptation? In the flesh. Satan reaches the mind through the flesh. God reaches the flesh through the mind. Satan controls the mind through the flesh. Through this means, through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, through ambition for the world and honor and respect of men, through these things, Satan draws upon us, upon our minds, to get us to yield. Our minds respond, and we cherish that thing. By this means, his temptation asserts their power. Then we have sinned. But until that drawing of the flesh is cherished, there is no sin. There is no temptation, but not, there is temptation, but not sin. Every man is tempted to draw in real and entice and so on. Now, thus you see that where the victory comes, where the battlefield is, right upon the line between the flesh and the mind. The battle is fought in the realm of the thoughts. The battle against the flesh, I mean, is fought altogether, and the victory run, won in the realm of the thoughts. Therefore, Christ came in just as such flesh as ours, but with a mind that held its integrity against every temptation, against every inducement to sin, a mind that never consented to sin, never in the least conceivable shadow of a thought. And by that means, he has brought that divine mind to every man on earth. Therefore, every man for the choosing and by the choosing can have that divine mind that conquers sin in the flesh. And Dr. Young's translation of 1 John 5.20 says, You know that the Son of God has come and has given us a mind. The German says the same thing exactly. The Greek too has given us a mind. To be sure he has, and that is what he came for. He, he had, we had the carnal mind, the mind that followed Satan and yielded to the flesh. That, what was it that enslaved Eve's mind? Oh, she saw that the tree was good for food. It was not good for any such thing. The appetite, the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh led her off. She took of the tree and did eat it. The appetite led and enslaved the mind, and the mind of the flesh, that is enmity against God, it comes from Satan. And Christ is destroyed by the divine mind which he brought into the flesh. By this divine mind, he put the enmity on the foot and kept it there. By this he condemned sin in the flesh, so that there's, there is our victory, in him is our victory, and it's all in having that mind which was in him. How do you, when, when, when you read that, when you read what Jones is saying, is he differentiating between the mind of Christ and the mind of normal men? Is there a differentiation between the two? We, we're discussing. What Jones is saying mm -hmm. is very clear to me. He's saying the same thing just said. Jones is saying the same thing he just said. So let me hear what you think Jones is saying. Don't ask what you think Jones is saying. Because obviously you are think, thinking that Jones is saying something that Jones is not saying. So let me hear you. All right. The mind. I rather use the word mind, change it to thinking, and solve your problem. The thinking of a sinful man and the thinking of Christ. Who's thinking? Can't proceed. I will proceed. Uh -huh. Hold on. Ezekiel thir chapter 36, 26, and Ezekiel chapter 36, 27. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Hebrews 8, 10. Pause a minute. Hold on. Was a hard heart. Pardon me? Was a hard heart, a hard brain or a hard pumping organ? No. Was it? Was it? Um, hold on. No, no, I'm holding on. I want definition right now before you spend later on. Right now, no, give me no, your no, definition. I'm spinning. I'm spinning. No, I mean, you're, no, no. You're, trying to, you're trying to grasp this concept. I, I, I'm trying to grasp listen, the concept. Listen. 
Yes. You trying to defend a position. I am no. I am trying to make it clear. Tell me what is meant by a hard heart. A stubborn, hard way of thinking. Yes, somebody said a hard hearted. You wouldn't even give me a sign. All, all, all that's talking about a person's ideas and feelings and attitudes. It's not talking about brain or organ of the chest pump. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Continue. Hebrews 8 10. Mm -hmm. For this is the covenant I will make with the hope of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and will write them in their hearts. Put my laws in their thinking. I write, write it in all their ideas, attitudes, and so on. Okay. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Yes. Is this mind of Christ, the mind of the flesh that is in men outside of Christ, is the mind in which the desires of the flesh and the thoughts of the flesh have been able to exercise its power and create sin and sinful actions and sinful thinking. In Christ's mind, in Christ's mind, the flesh, though it was present, was not allowed to enter into his mind. So the thoughts that were in Christ's mind were not the thoughts of the flesh, were not the attitudes of the flesh, were not the behaviors of the flesh. It was the thoughts of God, the mind of God, and the word of God. So there's a separation between the mind, there's a distinction between the mind of Christ and the mind of carnal mind, man. Because the mind of carnal man has accepted the desires and thoughts of sinful thoughts into it, while the mind of Christ has never, by the slightest inclination, succumbed or allowed those sinful desires to take root in its thinking and in its behavior. So where's the problem, Brother Boone? So, so there's a distinction in my mind. Who's saying that there's not a distinction? Hold on, hold on. I want to get at your problem because we have no problem with Jones or those statements you just read because we know what mind is. But you seem to have a problem. Come out and say it. Now, Jones makes a statement too. Uh-huh. That it is not the old mind made over. But don't, go, don't go there yet. You are going there. Don't move on. No, don't move on yet. No, okay. Okay. Christ kept his thinking apparatus, all, which was the same as ours, always surrendered to the Father, always surrendered to the Father, by the Father's word, so that the Father's ideas, thinking, attitude, mm. thinking pattern on any matter was what he would reveal. Correct. For example, when the disciples came and said, Lazarus is dying, you love Lazarus. You go there and get some food when the days come. The sisters want you to come right away. Mm. Jesus could have allowed his thinking to go in the lines of human sympathy, I follow carefully, and for some people, some people holler, if he had gone to visit Lazarus when he said, that'd be righteousness. Listen carefully. But, you see how people is moved? But Jesus kept his thinking, surrendered to the program of his father, who said, for my glory, you will go when I tell you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, by keeping his thinking, attitudes will power intellect and emotions, always in surrender to his father, notwithstanding whatever natural emotions another man would have had, mm -hmm. and Jesus would have felt those natural pulls. He kept his thinking, both at the level of willpower, intellect and emotions, and the spring of thinking, spirit and soul, surrendered to his father, and by the Holy Spirit did his father's will, so that the father's thinking, program, plans for any matter were revealed and not what the sinful fallen, uh, 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 sinful fallen pull would have achieved if he, if he were not surrendered to his father. 
So when you talk about mind, we, we, and we understand thinking, so we have no problem. But you have a problem because you keep bringing up these statements as if we're not saying the same thing. All right, let's go on a little further. Let's go on a little further. Just give me a chance. Just give I, me a chance. I give you a chance. But I'm trying to clarify the chance at the same time, but you're not accepting the clarity. Because the mere fact you're going on to another chance, me, you know, accept this clarity. No, no, no. no it's no, like studying the Sabbath to a man, you go through all the tests, and you say, but this one, no, and no, this no. one, because no. you're not accept the rest. No, no, no judgment out of everybody. Like I ain't judging you. Okay. Okay. You've made it clear. Continue. No. You know that in Romans 7, uh -huh. according to the gospel, yes. that the Romans 7 mind is not a mind surrendered to God. The Romans 7 mind is a mind in which it consent to the law that it is good. Mm -hmm. It accept that the law is good. But it cannot find a way to obey so that when it attempts to do the law or to do or to obey, it end up being sinning against God. That's the Romans 7 mind. Is the Romans 7? Yeah, but I won't read something. Wait, 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 let me hear the word you use. Is the Romans 7? You said man or man, mind? The woman seven mind a man. Mind a man. I was that was mind there. The woman seven way of thinking. Thinking. The woman seven thinking. Okay. Okay. So see the difference here. In, mm -hmm. in the seven of Romans, they describe the man in whom flesh rules and leads the mind astray against the will of the man even. So the man. P pause has, a minute. Mm. What's meant by flesh ruling? And leading the mind astray. Let's get that clear. In other words, the, in Romans chapter 7, the man consent that the law is good. The man wants to do what the law says. In his mind, he wants to obey the law. But there's another law in his members, which is the law of sin, that brings that man's mind into captivity to the sin that is in him, and he, therefore he's not able to obey what the law says. Uh, listen carefully. Mm -hmm. It means that the principle, you, using the word flesh, and the word flesh can cause you some trouble. Okay. The principle of selfishness right. still controls this man's thinking. And his spirit. Don't, don't brain terms. It controls his thinking, his attitude. Right. The very spring of his thinking, that is his spirit, right. controls this man's thinking from, the, from its root. Right. And even though the man sees the beauty of the law of God, because selfishness still controls his thinking, he is putting a spin on that law, like the Pharisees, he can keep it externally and so on, but he really cannot get right done at a God-acceptable level, because unless the spring of his thoughts from the human spirit, is under the control of the spirit of God, which is the spirit of self-sacrifice and love, mm -hmm. then his thinking can't get the good it wants done done unless that radical change occurs. All right, listen, listen to how Jones proceeds. Pause, pause. You understand what I just said? Yeah. What I just said, right or wrong? Let me listen to how Jones No, no, proceeds. how Jones proceeds. Because you, you're seeing Jones through your lens and just quoting Jones and then getting to what words mean and then you're just talking words. You're just saying mine and mine and mine and spirit and mine and mine and mine. You don't know what you're saying. All right, all right. So I asked you what I just said, if it is right or wrong. Allow me to proceed. All right, proceed. Okay, thank you. Proceed. See the difference. In proceed. the seventh chapter of Romans, mm -hmm. there's described the man in whom the flesh rules. And leads the mind astray against the will of man. In the ninth chapter of First Corinthians, verse 26 to 27, is described the man in whom the mind has control. That is the Christian. The mind has control of the body, and the body is under, and he keeps it under. Therefore, it is written in another place, Romans 12, 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the Greek word is the same word exactly as that. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creature, not an old man changed over, but a new made one. So, that it, so this is not an old mind made over, but a new created mind. So 
This is the mind of Christ wrought in us by the Spirit of God, giving us the mind of Christ, and so making an entirely new mind in us and for us. So, the mind of Christ, according to Jones, is a new mind. It is not the old the mind made over. It is a new functional mind. It is a mind in which the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, is in control. The thoughts expressed in that mind are the thoughts of God. It is a new created mind. Is that true or is that false? What is your definition of mind? A person's mind is not more, it is more to me than his way of thinking. Ah. ah. It is more to I know me. I got probe you till you really hold on, come hold on. It is more so I want me, your definition of mind. It is more to me than his way of thinking. Well, tell me what it is. A man's mind, a, a person's mind, a person's mind and his way of thinking, in other words, here's the Roman 7 man. No, don't go to here's the Roman no, no, 7 no, hold man. On, hold on. What I is your definition way, of mind? I'm dealing with the way of thinking. He is thinking that to, to obey the law is good. He is see the law, he sees that it is righteous, and he wants to obey. But he has no power to but obey. But Abu what so is your definition of, of so mind? In, in his way of thinking, he is enslaved. But he Abu cannot Abu help himself. But Abu what is your Hold definition on. of mind? Hold on, what, what of, is your definition of mind? My definition of mind, my definition of mind, and I'm not very clear on my definition of mind. I, I, know, I know that. I've been honest with you. I, been, I know. No, I've been honest with you. I'm trying to understand this thing like anybody else. I'm trying to understand this thing like anybody else. But what I understand from reading this is that it is not the old mind made over. What? It is a new created mind that was wrought out in Christ and given to humanity. What is the definition of the word mind? In other words, in other words, when Christ was in humanity, his thinking are more than his thinking. What is the more than his thinking? The, the, the spirit of God. The more than a man's thinking is the spirit of well, God? The spirit of God. The spirit of God. And if you read Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2. And I can't open my Bible. No, Isaiah 59. It says that the spirit of God keeps the individual. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got, you got a Bible? Isaiah chapter 59, 1 and 2. My, uh, I think it's Isaiah 59. Huh? That's not that? Wait, let's see if I got it here. All right, listen to it. Isaiah 59, 21, sorry. As for me, this is the, my covenant with, with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, or not of the mouth of thy seed, seed not saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. So the spirit of God, the spirit of God, brings the word of God, and place it in the person's thinking. And therefore, the mind, the mind of that person has as its basis. Brother Boom, I have, to I have to interrupt you. I ask you the mind. I ask you what is the definition of mind? And you're telling me what the spirit can control the mind and so on? None of that is a problem. What is the definition of mind? You told me it is more than thinking. What is the more? I am saying that in the mind. Pardon? Of I am saying that in the mind of Christ, his but thing... Boom, I don't want to tell me about the mind of Christ. That's the definition of mind. Whether it's Christ, Satan's, yours, Gabriel's, or anybody, mind. Just mind. Because if you don't get that right, you can be wobbling all about the place. Mind. What is my, your definition of mind? You still working it out? Oh, but if you don't have a seat, and when you work it out, come back. Because we can't work it out there. How are you going? No, no, but, but I just, I just, you see, all right. Okay, all right fine. You want to stand up there and work it out, right? No, no, no. You see, no, you see our mind. 
the human mind, mm -hmm. the human mind is the ability, is the person's ability to think and to reason and to, and so on. So that's your definition of mind, ability to think. Is the, is the ability to think and to reason. Mm -hmm. In the carnal mind, in the carnal, in the man's, in, 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 in a man outside of Christ. Uh -huh. his, his reasoning, even though, he re even though he can reason properly or effectively or know what is right from wrong, he has no power to accomplish the right from the wrong. So his mind, even though his mind is saying, this is right. He, when he, to, to, to do it, he has no power to do it. But nobody has a problem so, so, with so, that, so, Brother Boom. But you have, you have a problem that I want to get clear. No, no, no. I, saying, do we have a problem with that? So, so the mind... So, what, so what I'm saying, I, I train A man outside of Christ... Pause. Does a man outside of Christ have a mind? Yes. Okay. A man in Christ has a mind. Correct. Uh -huh. See, but, has a mind. Yeah, but, but let's, let's look at the difference between the two minds. But you see, to look at the difference between minds, you've got to know what mind is first. But, but, no, but you see, the mind that the man have outside of Christ is a mind that is weak and fallen. But nobody is describing the mind. What is mind, Brother Boom? The ability, Whether weak or not, for what is mind? The ability to think. The ability to think. The, 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 okay. think, the whole thing can process. Uh-huh. Which has it, when the man is outside of Christ, it has its seat in the flesh. So, it has, the flesh is in control of that process. Uh -huh. When a man is in Christ now, uh -huh. the spirit is in control of that thinking. Uh -huh. and, the spirit, and the thoughts of the spirit are expressed through the mind of the individual. And that spirit crucifies the flesh in that man. So what is your problem, Brother Boom? No, no, no. But my problem is, my problem is that there are some people who seem to suggest oh. that there's this shift of the mind from being sinful into a mind that is being, that can be, in other words, it is the old mind made new. Oh, who, who, I am, who, who has that idea? Well, I get that impression. From who? I get the impression. From who? I get the impression. From that, who? Oh, I don't know. I know where from who. I get the impression that it is the old mind made the old mind change over. When it's truth and in fact, according to what my reading is, it is the mind of God. It is not no old mind made over transformed. It is a new mind altogether. But 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 wants want, to make a point. But yeah, just ahead, a minute. For from the time this movement started. Mm. We were clear from the Zero Ages 173. This is not a modified situation, it's a new, and so on. So I want to know who, who, who was the source of this idea. No, we had a discussion in Sabbath school. Or oh, from your Sabbath school, this yeah. idea came up. Yeah. You, you, oh, I speak with you, brother. No, this is what he wanted to tell you oh. that I, in my class, they are sitting down. Uh -huh. We were listening to his class behind there. Oh. And that was the discussion long ago. So this, this is his main point he got now. He ain't arguing with you so much. The problem came up in the class. Oh, oh yeah. but, 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 but you see, this is, a, this is not fair to me. Because I keep asking Brother Broom, what is your problem? Before you tell me there's a problem with the class that he dealing with, he, he got me feel that there's things like, this morning, if you said that I said something about Jesus and sinful mind, tell me where the problem is early so we know how you're moving. So there's a problem that started in your class. And somebody was suggesting in your class that the new mind is the old, that the new thinking is the old thinking modified? I got that impression. Oh. I got that impression. And, and, oh, I see. I see. One moment. Okay. 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 Now, if that, if that Sabbath school is really the source. If that Sabbath school discussion is really the source of the problem, I feel a bit eased, but that is not what the House of Chloe reported to me. My the House of Chloe reported to me no, that no. in another group, in another group, mm -hmm. not having the House of Chloe mm -hmm. reported to me, mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul, that in another jurisdiction I'm, I'm impersonating, 
not having to do with anybody in the class they're talking, mm. this problem arose. So explain that to me, Brother Broom. Well, the discussion, the discussion had to do with the fact that the mind, the mind of Christ is not our mind made over, but a new created mind. Oh, so you were clarifying that group. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I, I was saying in that group that the mind of Christ is a new created mind. It is not the mind that I have made Come, over Ria. or made new. I want to hear from Sister Rhea. new created mind. I want to hear from Sister Rhea. Go ahead. House of Chloe. From my understanding, I am a member of the school class. And this is, well, I missed the last session, but this was not the main point. My understanding is, as you were asking first, what is the mind? And you were saying the mind made over. How do you get this mind made over? In our discussions, my understanding from it is that you have to understand the, the, the mind is the thinking process. To, so to get a mind or a new mind or mind made over, it is the spirit that controls the mind. With the carnal man, the flesh, a carnal mindedness is what controls that thinking, and therefore the output of that mind will only be sinful. When you have the Spirit of God and the Spirit controls that thinking process, then that's how the new mind comes about. But you're seeming, but your stress on is not an old mind made over, but a new mind. It seems as if you're saying that our, the mind that we get from Christ is almost something tangible. And there's nothing, and, and the mind of itself is nothing tangible. The mind is a function of the brain. It's the thinking. And the only, and the only way it could change by having a new spirit controlling that thinking. And that's how we get in the mind of Christ, by accepting that Holy Spirit into our minds to get a new mind. It, but it seems that if you were suggesting something different, or you're going on a different line. Now hold on. Thank you. Now hold on. If the mind that is in the flesh, the mind that is in the flesh. Which, what's the mind that is in the flesh? The thinking of the flesh. Or the thinking of the flesh. The okay. thinking of the flesh. If okay. you're talking about mind. Okay. The thinking of the flesh is distinct and separate from the thinking of the spirit. What's meant by the term thinking of the flesh? The Better thinking more. of the flesh. What's meant by that term? The thinking of the flesh is the desires. Can, is your, the desires. can your toe or liver think? So what, you see, uh, Vilina Short Hold gave on. a very clear dissertation on the A.T. Jones explanation that people still get wrong. Can your toe or liver or kidney or anything so think? No, hold on. So hold on. Hold on. Proceed, proceed. No, 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 let me say that. Don't proceed. say no. You see, you keep Enough, using the hold term on. mind hold of on, the flesh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Enough dopamine in a man's bloodstream create different thoughts and feelings. Enough chemical, enough chemical changes in the body create different effects upon the brain and the mind. So don't say, don't, don't say that the chemistry of the body has no effect on the mind. Who said that? No, no, what I'm trying to say, no, if you're, if you're saying, if you're saying that the mind is only thinking, without the effect of the chemistry of the body. But who said that? Suppose you were to cut off a man's, suppose you were to cut off a man's body from here down and keep up here alive. According to you, the man would be sanctified. No. Because you got none coming up from the flesh. No. In other words, you have to understand that the that, seat, the seat of everything is in the function of the brain. But understand that the something. pathways and the function of the brain has been affected by sin. Nobody's saying all. So therefore, so even though the seat of everything is in the, is in the brain, uh -huh. the pathways. What pathways? The, the pathways of the chemical reactions that produce the thoughts uh -huh. affects the brain. And therefore, the thoughts are a natural progression. The thoughts are a natural progression of the flesh. Okay. All right. So, 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 so don't, don't, so therefore... What we're saying is, in Christ Jesus, the same process was there. Same Christ things coming Jesus, up to his, to his brain. In Christ Jesus, uh -huh. 
the mind that was in Christ Jesus. Which mind that was in Christ Jesus? The mind of the Spirit. What the mind, mind of the Spirit? The mind of God. The what word mind of, of God? The word of God. Now pause, pause. You see how you can hide behind your words. Jesus had to keep our thinking apparatus which he took on surrender to his father so that the father's thinking on any matter came through and when you keep right. using mind and flesh and so on why are you saying the same thing so, so, the, so the father's thinking that's what the father's thinking coming true uh-huh is a distinct mind from the mind of our flesh in other words, Christ said, hold on, hold on. It's a distinct way of thinking than no, no, our no. thinking, than our Christ, selfish thinking. Christ's way of thinking uh -huh. never succumb to the flesh, to its desires, or to self. True. So Christ's way of thinking was a new creation in the universe. What do you mean by new creation? Within humanity. Within humanity. Uh -huh. It was a new creation. It never existed in humanity before. Because there was no sin in Christ. Christ, sin, Christ was sinless. His thoughts were sinless. In other words, Christ never consented to sin. So therefore, his mind, his mind was pure and undefiled. It was new. It is a, it is a, it is a new creation. Pardon me? I talk about after man's sin. I talk about after man's sin. After the humans, after sin entered into the universe, there is no mind that is like Christ's mind. Christ's mind, Christ's mind was a mind whose thoughts was always submissive to the Father. I right, pause. The self-sacrificing love was always okay. evident in his thinking, and therefore his mind was new to humanity, right, to sinful boom. humanity. Right, but let's say, okay, what's your problem? What's my problem? Yeah. I am saying that that is not a way of thinking made over. So that who, is sa a, who, who that says is so? A, no, no, but you're saying, you're saying that when humanity in his sinless way, his thinking, is his way of thinking is his mind. His way of thinking. Christ's way of thinking was distinct and separate by me and your sinful man way of thinking. So, so, okay, so what's the problem? So therefore, that mind is not that same way of thinking made over. Who said it was? Well, you said, no, listen to her. Um, she said, she just said, and everybody agreed. Everybody agreed. She said that it is. She said she was getting confused by what you were saying. No, no, no. She is saying. But, but, but the young lady she is. is saying that it is the way of thinking that it is the same way of thinking. She did not say so. She did not say so. I just listened to her. She went to come back and don't pack, don't pack the bags there, sister. Come. 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 Sister Ray was not saying that, brother Boom. I yes, did not Ria. say that it's the same way of thinking. I'm, I asked him where did the change came and how did, does this change come about? This change to this new mind. And I'm saying that the new mind comes by the, the believer accepting the spirit of God, which now controls our way of our thinking, and that's how we get our, the mind of Christ. Is the spirit, which, which spirit do you have, or which spirit is controlling your thinking, which spirit is controlling your mind? So if you are a kernel, then the flesh will be controlling your thinking, but is the spirit, when you accept Christ, the spirit of God, now con you now get the mind of God, which controls your thinking process. But I was saying that it, it was coming over to me from what a brother Boom saying that it sounds like if he's talking about the mind being something tangible, structural, so structural, that could come in and go out. Exactly. So the only thing that changes is that spirit, that spirit that dwells in our mind. That is where the change comes. That's where you understand it to be. Brother Boom, you understand what the young lady said? I understand what she's saying. Uh -huh. I understand what she's saying. Yes. I am saying though. Uh -huh. I am saying though. That this new mind, that this new mind is a mind that was created in Christ Jesus. That's what I'm saying. I'm what do you saying, mean by created? In other words, it was a mind that it was totally dependent upon the Father. That self in any of its form never appeared, never was allowed to come up. That it kept self and crucified self 
in the flesh as well as his righteous self. And that that mind and that mind is a new creation. It is a new created mind in Christ Jesus. If mind means thoughts and the man Christ Jesus surrendered our thinking apparatus, sinful and fallen, to the Father constantly and continuously so that the Father through the Holy Spirit would manifest the Father's thinking through him and the Father's thinking is uncreated without beginning or without ending. What you, you, and you keep stressing creation. I'm saying you have to explain to people like Sister Ray and so on what you mean, no, lest in, you confuse in a, people. In other words, Christ came into humanity. Christ came into humanity. The scripture refers to him as the new man. The scripture refers to him as the new man. He came into humanity. And when he came into humanity, he brought into humanity, he brought into humanity the mind of God. And right. that mind of God, uh, listen, and that, and that mind of, and he was the only human being that obeyed perfectly, that kept the law perfectly, that was in complete submission to his father. And it is a mind, it is a mind that existed in God but in humanity, it manifested itself in Christ. And it is, it is, to me, to my way of thinking, it is a new created mind. And we get it by faith and accepting Christ and his righteousness. It is given to us as a gift. Okay, our time is gone. You have to stop. Time is gone. We can end in prayer, but I can see that uh, we have some trouble here. We have a lot of trouble in areas that I should, that I would think we ought not to have, but we have to come back here and clarify again. Because what you say, Brother Boom, using fancy words like mine and created and so on without explaining each stage, uh, is not cutting it in terms of explaining to people. Not cutting it because you, you somehow you use a mind in a structural way, whether you want to admit it or not. Something cutting out and coming in, coming in, coming in. It reminds me of the old FT White theory, taking this kernel mind out of and away from, as if it is an organ. And it smacks of that. But we'll have to come back to it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the entire Sabbath day, or discussions, or sharing, the things we have to make sure that we have clear as we approach the end. So we thank you for these opportunities where things that might not have come out if there is not discussion come out to show us our need for further study, more prayer and sharing. Take us now to our several homes in peace and safety. Protect us, guide us into all truth. Forgive us, save us. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Thank you. Good evening. God bless. Tomorrow night or Sunday evening service continues and God bless you during the week. Pray for, let's pray for each other. God bless you. Thank you.